What is up EBRs? I hope you're having an awesome day. Hopefully taking a break from the grind and maybe watching this video about a bike review. That would be awesome. But uh, yeah, I'm having a great day. Check this out. I got this awesome trail, all this area out here, literally all to myself. Not a single person around. Couldn't ask for anything more. And today we are reviewing the Admotor Moton M350 trike and this thing has been just really a lot of fun to ride and to test out i've put about eight or ten miles or so on this frame so far and really just having a lot of fun with it it's got um a pretty powerful 500 watt motor here in the front it's got front suspension it's got a seat post suspension these extra wide fat four inch tires 24 inch in the front 20 inch in the back and uh yeah it's it's really been just a lot of fun to ride i always get looks when I'm out on an electric bike. People always stare. I honestly barely even see it anymore, but literally I've never had an experience like this with this bike. People have, and this is not exaggeration, while I've ride, been riding on the sidewalk, people like in parking lots that have been driving have literally, a couple people have slammed in their brakes, jumped out of the car and been like, hey, 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 what is that? Is that an electric bike? Is that a tricycle? What is that? And they just want to come see what this thing is. It's, it's really weird. It's a really big head turner. Uh, but before I dive into this thing, there's, there's a couple of, um, just kind of things I want to talk about as far as the company goes and just unboxing this bike and what that experience was like. So first of all, again, this company is called AdMotor. I've been reviewing quite a few of their bikes. This is, I think, my sixth or seventh one. And um, this is a direct order only company. And so with direct order only, there's definitely some, some huge pros, or I would say one huge pro that comes along with that. And, and that is that, you know, direct order only, generally speaking, they're going to have a better price point than a brick and mortar store. So like this bike right here, for instance, costs $25.99. Um, and also as a quick aside, I'll throw up a, uh, an overlay right here, but they have a the higher end version of this with a 750 watt motor and the larger capacity battery right now on sale at the time of this video for 30% off. I think it's uh, $2,099 or something like that. So that's kind of a cool opportunity right there. But yeah, generally speaking, um, lower price point and that's just makes sense i mean brick <clears throat> a uh, direct order only they don't have brick and mortar stores they don't have to keep inventory around the world no you know um, electricity no overhead no um not as many staff so that makes sense that it would be less money and that i think is kind of the same thing with this is i feel like if this bike was in a shop it probably would be more than 25.99 because of what it offers now their potential downfalls with direct order only, and this is something that I have experienced with AdMotor, is that there can be kind of a communication difficulty, a communication breakdown a little bit. So sometimes it can be difficult just to understand the company um, if you're talking to them on the phone or even over email, you know, and sometimes it might be a little bit difficult to get a hold of them. Sometimes it takes a couple of days for them to get back. So, you know, that's kind of might be tough for some people who really want to do extra research on this bike or any bike from AdMotor or any direct order company because again you can't see it in person before you buy so maybe it would be nice to be able to ask all these questions but that can be difficult so you know there is that and and also with direct order only these bikes have to be assembled by the buyer so i had to put this bike together and i'm going to tell you right now this was this was the most difficult bike or at least the most time consuming bike to put together that i have put together so far and the box that it came in um, i'm going to show you guys me unboxing this thing and uh putting it together here right now but the box for this it looked like a freaking refrigerator it was like this high super wide and getting it up the stairs was extremely difficult so if you guys do buy this it might be a good idea to have somebody help you bring it up the stairs if you do live in an apartment or just a place where you have stairs in general so that's just something to keep in mind but putting it together um so sometimes with ad motor or, or any direct order company sometimes not all the parts fit together just right like this fender and even this fender right here you can see by this bracing little setup that it has this was a it looks like a, a fender that was taken from a different model and just kind of adapted to this so it's it's not super sturdy um you know but it, at least it fits so that's cool um but yeah sometimes the fenders won't fit sometimes the racks don't fit quite right with this bike everything fit together fine um, but again it was time consuming to put, get, put to, to put together it took me about 45 minutes to get this thing fully assembled and um, yeah it's just there's something else to kind of keep in mind when when buying this but back to the price real quick one thing else I do want to say about ad motor which is pretty cool is that for shipping to the US it is completely free so these guys do free shipping anywhere in the US which I think is a nice 
just a, a kind of a, a nice nod from the company because I've seen a lot of other companies where it's like, oh, this is a really low price, but you go to check out and it's like, oh, it's $300 to ship. Well, that kind of defeats you know the low price. So free shipping, that's nice. Okay, I've talked about this for long enough. Let's dive into this bike and man, where should I start with this thing? Um, I think I wanna start again with the motor on this just because it's, this is the first um, front hub motor that I have seen and it's just a little bit a little bit interesting a little bit different this is the Bafang 500 watt 80 newton meters of torque geared hub motor here in the front and this motor is actually pretty powerful it feels more powerful than 500 watts for some reason I don't know why maybe it's just the fact that this is a trike and anybody who's ridden a trike will know that they are a little bit less stable they are prone to tip you know if you try to turn and so maybe just it feels faster more powerful i don't know but it feels really peppy one thing about this this motor and you guys will hear it later on when i do the ride test but it definitely has a really loud whirring noise once it gets to the higher rpms it's it's relatively quiet at low rpms but once it starts to top out like it really it really gets going so um yeah it, it's not the quietest motor now having the motors in the front you know i was talking to cord about this and generally speaking when you have a motor in the front like this there's going to be a higher risk of slippage with the front wheel because you know mo uh, the weight goes to the back and the front wheel pops up just a little bit less pressure so wheel spin but with these tires again this is a four inch wide 24 inch tall tire there's just tons of extra traction with this thing the the tire patch is is really wide and it's got a 5 to 30 psi so you could even air this thing down and if i wanted to tackle maybe um muddy train loose train whatever i could air this down and, and get even a wider tire patch and even more traction and i have not noticed that there was any slippage with this so that's that's really cool i like that up here on the handlebars, we've got a uh, pretty entry-level Tektro mechanical brake levers here. This is just the uh, the four-finger kind of rubberized edge, pretty standard. <clears throat> and in the front here, we've got a 180 millimeter disc brake. And then in the back, there is a 160 millimeter disc brake. Let's see if we can get a shot of this thing here underneath. So with the disc brake in the back, this brake, as far as I can tell, it only affects the left wheel here. Maybe it's the right wheel, I don't remember. It only affects one of the wheels. It only applies pressure to one wheel. I have tried to tighten down every bolt that I can find back here to see if maybe this axle is, um, you know, if it's supposed to go together or maybe one of the wheels is just a floating wheel. But basically, in my experience, it looks like this only applies pressure to one wheel. And what I've noticed with that is that when I hit the, when I hit the rear brake here, um, especially on a, if I'm turning a little bit, it, this thing really wants to, to lean or to kind of sag to one side when using the rear brake. Um, you know, I think that's not that big of a deal. It would be nice if it, if it hit both sides, but you know, whatever. The brakes are, are okay as they are. They're not extraordinarily powerful. And the reason I mention that is because, okay, so when this thing is, is dry, when there's nothing in the back, um, this thing weighs uh, about 82 pounds, which is definitely heavy for an electric bike course there's a tricycle suspension in the front seat post suspension rack so it makes sense that it's heavy but with it with a dry weight and me being 200 pounds and carrying about 25 pounds of camera gear the braking feels fine my only concern might be if I load this thing up this uh, rear cargo rack tada shy of surprise look what's inside here we got water we got the battery charger uh, pretty standard it is a 1.2 pound a little bit higher output 2.5 amp so that's nice but if I was to load this thing up, um, because the capacity of this is 350 pounds, I would definitely want to keep it at a lower speed just because, again, this is mechanical brakes, you know, so that's just, that's my caution here to you guys for that. Now, what's great about these brakes is they do have motor inhibitors built in. So whenever I hit either the brake levers while I'm in motion, um, it's going to cut power to the front motor here, which is great. That's just going to ensure the shortest possible stopping distance and just hopefully help to minimize getting in an accident or accidentally hitting something in case, you know, I forget to stop pedaling. I forget to let off, let off the throttle. Um, motor inhibitors kind of take care of that. You know, it's like a, like a dummy safety feature for me. So I like that. Also something to point out here. I really appreciate um, this kind of cluster right here. 
I've seen this a couple of times now. I really like this with the with the flick bell kind of in this cluster in between the grip and in between the brake lever because when I rest my hands like this, it's just really natural and like my finger is right there on the bell as opposed to having a flick bell on the handlebar and sometimes I have to reposition my hand kind of clutters up the the handlebars for me not really a big fan of that so I, I i love these they're really nice and while we're over here with the grips these are just ergonomic black um you know i think it's like a faux leather got some stitching uh, these are not locking so they, they could spin around if, uh, if i was to place a lot of torque on them you can even see like a little bit they they do spin just a little bit Over here on this side, we've got a seven-speed Shimano SIS index trigger shifter. Again, entry-level component, but um, this is a relatively affordable bike for what we're getting here at $25.99. So it does make sense that they're going to have some entry-level components here. But what's cool is that they did upgrade the, the derailleur. Um, so instead of a Shimano Tourney, we have a Shimano Altus. Oh, can we see it? I don't know if you guys can see the, the label or anything back there, but this is the Shimano Altus back here, the derailleur. Um, so that's a nice little upgrade. We've got a uh, 14 to 28 tooth spread here in the rear cassette and a 48 tooth chain ring. And it's the, the gearing here on this, it feels right. Um, the gearing feels right for this bike. So when I'm pedaling this thing at about 16 miles per hour in, the, in top gear, that feels like a good cadence for me. And frankly, for me personally, I wouldn't want to go much faster than this. This, this bike does top out at 20 miles per hour out of the box. Um, you can adjust the top speed up to 25 miles per hour um, in the settings if you ever wanted to. We do have a half grip twist throttle up here as well. Um, the twist grip, this throttle is dead for me out of the box. Again, I, I don't know if maybe I nicked something when I was putting it together or Again, I'm pretty sure I plugged everything in here, but the throttle isn't working for me. But based on the other Ad Motor bikes that I've reviewed, the throttle is probably going to be live at zero miles per hour, um, like pretty much all their other bikes. And I think that's really important for this bike. It's because of the heavy weight. Um, we got a 12 magnet cadence sensor here, you know, which does have a delay from the time that I start pedaling to the time that the motor actually gives me power. You can see the magnets over here. 12 magnet cadence sensor is gonna have a little bit higher resolution than um, you know, a six or eight magnet cadence sensor. So that's kind of a little upgrade right there as well. But the throttle's nice because you can override the, um, the delay. You know, So if I start to pedal, if I'm at a stoplight, I'm trying to cross a crosswalk, or even somewhere out here, maybe starting on a hill on a high gear, I could override it with a throttle. Um, again, assuming that is how it works, I, I really think that it's gonna be live at zero miles per hour just based on the other Ad Motor bikes that I've reviewed. So let's see, what else do we have up here? We've got uh, this headlight. It is a Spininga Trendo headlight. You can see that the, the wires came out. I did assemble this. It, it comes unassembled, just so you know, um, out of the box. You have to kind of put these wires in the back right here. Um, let's see here. The wire with the line is the negative. Hoping you guys can see that. There's a little bit of shadowing. The line with the wire on this side is the negative, and the other one is a positive, and they, they have markings in the back of this. But I was trying to adjust the, uh, the fender here as I was riding. It kind of got loose, and I accidentally tore those out. I just haven't put them back in. So, uh, But the headlight, it, it does an okay job. It's relatively bright. It's got a fair beam pattern. Um, it's a mostly a throw beam pattern, so that means it's a pretty tight, pretty tight spot, you know, almost like a ball, and then it's got kind of like striated beams on either side, just just extra spill that the uh, reflector in here kind of just doesn't reflect very well, and that's kind of why that happens. But you know, this headlamp is also um, affixed to the arch of the suspension here and that just makes it unsuspended weight and it's, it's just gonna make it bounce around more if it's not tightened down. As you can see, I, I need to tighten this a little bit more. It can move over time. It can even dip down maybe a little bit while I'm riding. So um, again, just kind of another caution, just, just to make sure that this stuff is, is really tightened down. And for the suspension here, by the way, this is a Mozo 80 millimeter, 80 millimeters of travel for the suspension up here in the front. It does have lockout and I thought that this was a preload adjust, but I think this is just decorative. Like I put a lot of pressure on this thing and I think it's just decorative. It does not move at all. So I think this thing only has lockout. Um, so, you know, if, if I wanted to, if I wanted to turn these shocks off, basically, I can just flip this switch like this. And that means there's gonna be no travel. That's just gonna help increase efficiency if I'm on flat ground, if I don't wanna lose any of that efficiency with a bounce. So I can do that, I have that option. What else? Um, this fender here, by the way, this is a steel fender. 
Steel fenders are nice. They are going to be more rigid compared to a plastic fender, a little bit heavier than an aluminum fender. And, but the only thing though is they, they can rust over time. So if this thing does get scratched down to the, um, down through the paint to the metal, just watch out, that can, that can rust. So we got that suspension here in the front. I talked about that. 80 millimeters of travel. It does a good job of just dampening minor bumps, stuff like this, going over a curb. And then in the back here for this seat post, we have the seat post suspension as well, which is really awesome. It's got 30 millimeters of travel around there. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, it, 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 it does a pretty good job. Okay, look, this bike, it, the suspension is not top notch or anything, but it, do, it works really well, I think, because of these tires, right? The, the extra air volume in these tires, along with the front suspension and the seat post suspension, just does a good job of making this like a, a pretty comfy ride and just it just doesn't feel that jarring at all so yeah i really dig that i like the frame here on this it's got um kind of like a, a mid-step looking design you know it this it really it really swoops down that top bar and that just makes it easy for me to get on this bike i don't have to swing my leg over so check this out i can just get on whoop, just pop my leg over like this and i can just hop on and that's it i mean that's nice it just helps make this bike i think approachable and it also is sweet oops because check this out, I can just sit here on this bike and you know, no big deal. I'm not gonna tip over. And I think that's one of the big appeals really to me and maybe to you guys as well of this bike is just, it's approachable, it's easy, it's fun. And yeah, so cool. All right, so back to the seat post real quick. Um, this does have a quick release, so this thing can be adjusted on the fly. And it also has a quick release to flip the saddle up like that, which is cool because with this silverfish style battery here, uh, this is a 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery, 499 watt hours of juice. So normally with this setup here, the seat post has to be completely taken out before the battery can come out. But with this, all you have to do is hit this switch like this. You see right underneath here, just flip this up. The saddle pops up like this, turn the key and the battery just pops out. And that is the battery. I think this one weighs about nine pounds, if I remember correctly. And, you know, I do like that these batteries, this style has this handle here on top. This makes it easier to, to carry. Um, <laughs> Corey actually advised me to be a little bit more gentle with the batteries. And that was a really good point. I think in one of my last videos, I just kind of dropped this thing back in and that can damage the battery. So, you know, I'm reminding myself and you guys just to be careful when putting these batteries back in, just gently lower it like I just did. Give it a nice little push, make sure it's in, flip the seat post back down, and then we can turn the key and actually activate this thing. So to, to keep this bike, or to operate this bike, the key does have to be left in. So we have to turn this thing to the on position, and now this battery is live, and now we can turn on the control center if I wanted to. Um, having the key in there, you know, one thing I do want to caution about that is I found that sometimes when I'm pedaling with key, with these kind of batteries, the Silverfish style with the key here on the top, um, I can have like a, I guess like an ankle strike or a shoe strike. I've actually cut my ankle a little bit on one of the keys. And, but my, my biggest concern is, I mean, not really personal injury to be honest, but my biggest concern would be damaging the battery itself and maybe breaking the key off or something. So there's something to keep in mind with that. This basket, by the way, this, this rear cargo rack is just, it's so sweet. It's got um, four points of contact here in the bottom where it screws in. Um, it's really sturdy. It comes with this this liner with like a with like a vinyl top. So I'm thinking it's probably waterproof or at least really water resistant. It does have zippers, so it will zipper close. They're not YKK zippers, but you know it it works fine. I've also got these little uh, Velcro pieces that can um, just Velcro around the the upper part of this this basket here and just kind of keeps this thing nice and secure but like for me i see this thing and i'm like oh man if i had a little dog or something like i just think that would be the coolest thing to have like a pet in the back if they were into that and just like ride around with this it would just be so much fun um and and again i just i really think that that's what this bike is for is just to have fun and to do cool stuff with it like it can be a utility bike sure because i can carry 350 pounds but really how am i going to put 350 pounds of, of cargo in this little space i just think of it more like okay 
you know, maybe I can throw a cooler back here. I can go to the beach and, and do whatever and just kind of hang out, have a picnic. Um, that's what makes sense to me for this bike. So yeah, but back to the battery here though. The charging port on this battery is up here on the top on the right hand side. And I like that it is on the top because when I do plug this in, I'm not going to be as worried of interference with the cranks, um, you know, hitting the cord. Sometimes these batteries have the charging ports here at the bottom and it has happened to me and it's, it's easy to happen where it'll be plugged in and then if I'm pulling this bike back or moving it, I forgot, I forget all the time it's plugged in. Um, it's just the, the cranks will hit it. And again, that can damage the battery. And I just, I don't want that to happen for me or for you guys. That would just be such, such a <laughs> sad and disappointing thing to have like any bike and then be like, oh, I just trashed a battery. That sucks, but yeah. Okay, so um, let's talk about this chain ring here real quick. So this chain ring has a kind of a double-sided plastic chain guard slash guide. Um, I wouldn't really call it a bash guard because it is plastic, but this is nice because it's just gonna help keep the chain from popping off towards the outside and the inside because it is double-sided. So that's a nice piece there. I would recommend that if for anybody who is maybe taking this thing really off-road, maybe hunting, camping, something like that, just be careful going too intense because it is plastic. And if I get a big rock strike, like something like this, you know, boom, it could crack that. And that's not fun, nobody wants that. Let's see, you know, let's talk one last thing and then we'll go to the control center. I wanna talk about this stem really quick. Oh, can you guys hear that? Somebody's in trouble or hopefully injured. Hopefully they're okay. Okay, so for this stem here, this is uh, a cool piece of gear. Um, it's adjustable angle, so I can lower this stem and that is going to increase my reach and give me kind of a more aggressive and more efficient riding angle or I can raise this stem pretty much all the way up and that's going to give me a more upright angle, more relaxed, less efficient. It's also going to shorten the reach. Um, and I think that's a, a cool, but it's also an important feature for this bike because look, this bike only comes in one frame size, okay? This is a 16 inch bike and 16 inch frame size and that might not work for everybody and that's the only, only size this company offers and this is the only color. So if this is not a color that really screams you know, oh, this is awesome to you. Well, that's all we have for right now. Um, so I like that this, this is here because I feel like it helps compensate for that a little bit. Now to use this, it's really simple. You just, I just have to pull down on this uh, little lever right here, pull up on this. And then once I do that, that's, that's kind of hard to do with one hand here. It's pretty tight. Ooh, can I do it? No, I can't. Okay, but <laughs> it does it does move. I tighten it down quite a bit because I want to make sure that this did not, uh, so that the stem does not rotate here independent of the front tire. But yes, it does go almost all the way up like here and it does go almost all the way flat. So very cool. Just gonna go ahead and close that back. Right, all right, let's talk about the control center. So again, before I go to the control center, I'm gonna go come back here and make sure that my key is inserted. Okay, yes, it is in the on position. Now I can turn this thing on. To turn it on, pretty intuitive. I'm just gonna hold down the M button, which is the mode slash really the power button. Give it a long press and this thing comes to life. So with this control center, and really this is, I feel like with all the ad motor bikes here, whenever I turn this on, it is going to revert to pedal assist level one, which is right here on the bottom, pedal assist one. So let's say I'm going on difficult terrain and I want to keep it on five and I leave it for a while and turn it off or it just, I turn it off or it times out and it turns off. If I turn it back on, it is going to be back in pedal assist level one. I prefer it when the control centers um, keep it at the pedal assist level that I leave because if I left it there, it's probably where I want it, but whatever, that's fine, not a big deal. Up here on the top, we have a five bar battery indicator. I suppose technically we can call this a six bar battery indicator because when this thing is completely empty, it has zero bars and it flashes to let me know that, hey, you might want to start uh, chilling on the battery consumption because I'm about to run out of batteries. So yeah, five, six bar battery indicator, whatever you want to call it. Um, a little bit more precise than some of the four bar battery indicators that I've seen on other Adelander bikes. So a little bit of an upgrade, I suppose, that's nice. Top right, we have the odometer. I've got nine miles in this frame here in the middle, got the speed, and then they, they named their their modes here. So the pedal assist level one is eco, um, down bottom left, pedal assist mode, bottom right, the wattage output here. So we have five, well, six pedal assist levels. We have zero, which makes this a 
traditional bike. So if I put this in zero, the pedal assist is going to be dead and the throttle is going to be dead, which it is dead here because I think this is a defective one. But assuming this did work, um, everything is, is off and you just I can ride this like a regular bike. Going up to the pedal assist, one, two, three, four, and five, and that's what they look like. So the different pedal assist levels actually do a good job on this bike, I think, of it's really feeling different. So the pedal assist level one is not anywhere near as powerful as pedal assist level five. And it kind of tops out at around, I don't know, 10 miles an hour or something. And if I want to go faster and have more power, crank it up to two. If I want to go faster, more power, three, four, five, and so on. It's just, it, they all feel different. And I like that there's kind of a spread here. Um, let's see, if I want to, so you can also have current speed, max speed, or average speed shown here. And in order to access that, you can hold on the hold, do a long press on the up arrow. And let's see if that'll change. Yeah, so we'll see on the left, it says average speed now, and that's what it'll display. If I hold it again, max speed. If I hold it again, it's going to go back to just the current speed. If I hold down, it's going to be a walk mode. Oh, there she goes. Um, and the walk mode on this is one of the better ones that I feel like I've tested. Um, I like that it's it, it feels pretty slow and it might just be because this bike is heavier so uh, but yeah the, the walk mode I mean this thing does not run away from me I think somebody left a comment here in one of the other videos it's a really funny comment I said it was walk mode and they're like walk more walk, walk mode more like run mode because sometimes yeah they're they're really fast so this feels this feels well balanced the walk mode here if I hold the up arrow and the M button it will turn on the backlight here on this control center. You can see the light icon here. And if I had the um, light actually plugged in correctly, this front headlamp would turn on as well. Again, just real quick, this, this tail light back here, we do have a tail light. Um, this is an independent tail light. It is not connected to the electronics. It takes two AA batteries. There's a button here on the bottom. I'm gonna angle this up, see if I can hopefully show you guys the button. Button here on the bottom, when it turns on, it's just a a steady red, it doesn't blink or anything, and then this big area right here is a reflector. So that's that. Let's see what else. If you if you guys want to get into the settings here to change the top speed or to mess around with anything, how to do that is to hold the up and down arrows like this, and that's going to get into the settings. So this is the, the wheel size here for the motor, 26. I want to leave that. Uh, and this is the top speed. So uh, again, I turn this all the way up here. I think this ends up being like 25 miles an hour, but I can turn this all the way down to 12 kilometers an hour, which is, let's see, like, um, I don't know, like six miles an hour or something. I, I don't know. But yes, it can be adjusted, which is nice. So if I want to loan this bike out to somebody who might not be as experienced, let, let the kid ride it or something like that, you know, I can adjust this and I like that. I'm going to turn it back up to 40 here and hit the mode button again to toggle. And I actually don't know what this function does, but it's got three different settings. It's got three, one, and two. I just left it at two for whatever reason. Hit it again, miles per hour or kilometers per hour. So if you guys don't like miles per hour, if you want to switch it to kilometers per hour, maybe if you live in Europe, you can do that. And we're back to the wheels. So to get out of the um, settings here, you just hold the M button and boom, it reverts back to the screen. So the control center here, um, it's pretty, as you can see, like I can see this thing really easy, broad daylight. Like no matter how I turn it, it's pretty visible. So the glare is not an issue for me with this, with this um, display. However, it is not adjustable without tools. So if you guys did want to adjust it, or if I wanted to adjust it for glare for whatever reason, or take it off at a bike rack, that's just not really easy to do unless I have like an Allen wrench with me. Um, but something that is cool about this one is it does have a full size type A USB port right there. So I can plug in an extra light, I can plug in my phone, accessories, stuff like that on the go and charge it from the battery, which is great. I like that. Um, and then real quick, one last thing, back to the battery here. The, the fact that this is removable, I think is, is really important because this bike is so big and so heavy. Like I might not be able to charge the battery on the bike depending on my living situation. So being able to take this battery off, keep it stored in a cool dry location to extend the cell life and to charge it more easily, I do dig that. Um, I think I'm, I'm done here with the control center, but before I do a ride, I wanna go real quick. Um, so the overall width of this bike is just about 30 inches from the outside diameter of that wheel to the outside diameter of that wheel. Um, so most, I measured a couple doorways, okay? And most of the doorways that I measured were like 29 and a half or 30 inches. So basically 
And I tried taking this thing inside my apartment and moving it through, like actually taking it through a couple different doorways. And this thing for me, it fit through some of my doorways, but it did not fit through all of them. So again, I just wanted to kind of throw out all this weird little stuff because I have kind of ridden this bike for a little bit now. I just want to throw out all this weird little stuff to help give you guys a really full picture of where you where this bike can be used, where it can be stored, or if you do want to take it inside, maybe even like a coffee shop, like, hmm, will this fit through the doorway? I don't know, but yeah. Okay, I am done talking. I want to ride this bike some more. So I'm gonna go that way. See you in a minute. This first shot here is basically to display that tendency to tip like I was talking about earlier. Now I am exaggerating this. I'm leaning to try to get the wheel to tip while I'm turning, but it's just to, to show that yes, this does have a tendency to want to tip. And I really have to kind of throw my weight um, to counterbalance when I turn if I want to avoid getting a wheel in the air um, on some of these turns. And this one is just to kind of give a nice just profile view of the bike in action. I'm going to start to stop pedaling here a few times and also hear the motor starting and stopping. Just figure this is kind of a cool shot to throw in there as well. is the suspension shot just to see this thing working in action I'm gonna slow it down here real quick yep there we go and boom these things do take a pretty hard hit and they do a good job of soaking up um, a good deal of the shock and especially in conjunction with the big fat tires and that seat post suspension the ride overall like I said earlier it does feel pretty cushy this is a kind of an interesting shot. It's underneath the frame here to get a uh, shot of a derailleur in action. I'm just gonna switch gears back and forth a couple of times. And again, this is the Shimano Altus. So this is one step up from the Shimano Tourney, which is their entry level derailleur. Uh, this is still pretty entry level, but at least it is a step up though. That's nice. Also, look how long that chain is. It's ridiculous. So I pulled off the dirt road here just for a second so I could get a shot of the motor without the extra noise from the, the dirt and the bumps, stuff like that. Just so you guys can hear the starting and stopping noise of the motor from when I start and stop pedaling and also so you can hear um, just the noise level of the motor overall. So here we go. figured I would close with just a nice little ride shot. This is just the GoPro mounted to a chest rig right here. And I'm just going to do a little bit of riding and tackle a little bit of a hill here in a second. So that's kind of cool. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the Admotor Moton M350 trike review. Just again, real quick to recap. Yeah, this bike is really heavy. Yeah, this bike is prone to tipping, even at low speeds, if I don't shift my weight correctly when I turn. Um, yeah, this bike is unwieldy and might be difficult to get through doorways, but honestly, this thing is a lot of fun. And I think this would be a great bike for people who are looking for 
something that's approachable, something that's easy to ride, something that is fun to go on maybe a little bit of off-road places like this, maybe the beach, throw a cooler in the back and throw a pet in the back. And please guys, if anybody does get this bike and they have a dog that they put in the back, please post a picture, share it with us. That will be awesome. For the full ride up, head over to electricbikereview.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and ride safe.